Hello, everybody. This is Luke with uh, ResTech Studios, and I'm here to uh, show you the uh, updated version of my Landscape Master Materials. So this is version number two. So let's dive right in here. As you can see, it looks uh, definitely uh, a little bit better um, than uh, the previous one. So let's uh, kind of dive right in here. So um, by looking at the Master Material, let's bring this up here. So it looks, uh, you know, very similar. Um, I did make some little tweaks here and there, and uh, we're going to go over them. So one of the ones was uh, my layer blending. Um, before, it used to be kind of based on height. It was uh, based on the height maps uh, that was causing the, the blending to kind of happen. And uh, eventually, as I was kind of getting really into it, I, I didn't really like that the way it was kind of functioning. Um, it just w really wasn't blending very well, especially when you're using, when you're importing height maps. Um, it just, if it wasn't like a deep black or a perfect black compared to um, like a perfect white, you would just get this kind of odd blending happening with the, especially with rock and grass. So what I did was I turned everything basically into a uh, weight blended now. So it blends uh, much better with the, uh, between the, the actual materials between rock, um, sand, stone, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. So the uh, material itself as well. So the um, the foliage uh, removal and this whole this whole setup, um, I changed the kind of naming scheme naming scheme because it seemed to confuse a little bit of people when I was kind of naming them like grass, pebbles, needles, and rock. So now I'm actually just uh, corresponding them to the actual function that they're going to be on. So it makes it a little bit easier when you go to um, here, you got dirt one, dirt two, grass one, grass two. So basically, you know that anything that you put in this field is going to go on that layer um, as opposed to the way I had the naming scheme before. Um, a little bug that seemed to, um, it wasn't, the material that was actually causing it. it just seems to be something going on with unreal that when you double click on it sometimes you wouldn't get this details um, panel i've had uh three or four people um out of hundreds but three or four people uh recently come up to me and saying hey like i don't see the details tab that you have here it, it's basically like a blank screen when they open it up like this uh for some reason it's something with unreal if you were to just go to window and then click on details it brings everything up and you're, you're good to go so not really sure why that's doing it but figure out uh tell you guys if you had that issue that's how you fix it um so going kind of more on here so i made some uh changes to the um the functions so I added uh, two new parameters on most of all these functions besides rock, got an additional one. We have normal strength, and now we have displacement. Um, and you also see that now I actually added individual outputs uh, to give you more control on if you wanted to really expand this. Um, here's all your individual uh, control. So if you really wanted to uh, create yourself an auto material uh, based on slope or, or blending or whatnot, um, you can do that using these parameters here. Or if you wanted to create some sort of uh, way to use an actual splat map, uh, uh, splat map as opposed to the height maps that this is kind of what I'm creating this for is height maps. Um, you can you can do that using these um, these outputs and you can create kind of whatever you would like. So the normal strength and displacement. So let's go over that. So before tessellation used to be just globally controlled so when you up the tessellation it upped the tessellation for the entire landscape it didn't know then didn't, didn't matter what material it was now i actually have the tessellation displacement like uh per function layer basis so meaning that now i can control the tessellation for a certain layer let's just say this rock here Okay, let's go down to our rock. And we're gonna click on displacement rock. So right now I have 2.25. So I want you to kind of pay attention to um, just the rock layer. So as I up it, just the rock is being moved, right? And if I were to go to dirt um, 01 and click on displacement, as you'll see here, this dirt, just the dirt is raising up, not the actual stone, as you can see. It's just the dirt. And so I have this for every layer now. Um, so now you can really fine tune um, how you want your, your tessellation uh, on a per, per function layer uh, basis. So it um, gives you that 
extra amount of control. The normal strength is another no, uh, node that I, I entered. So let's go here. So as you can see, you can see our, our uh, displacements working, and then also you can see that the uh, the normals are working because you, know, you got that nice little shadowy detail. But what I did here is I gave you the ability to actually kind of darken up that normal shadows or make them lighter. So it kind of gives you, again, more kind of control on how your scene is going to look and how you want your shadows to look. Um, and this is for every single layer. So depending on what layer that you're using and, and the strength of your uh, your normals, you can still adjust it right here with this scalar parameter. So another uh, aspect that I added for the rock section is uh, this AO strength here. So as we kind of look at this, see how it's kind of, you know, it's bright. You still get your shadows. You can still see them. But if you wanted to really kind of control your, uh, your how dark your shadows are just, you know, for the ambient occlusion for your rock, you can just bring this down. And it kind of accentuates the um, the shadowing and the, the lighting that kind of gets cast on that actual texture. So it kind of brings out that roughness and specular maps that I have going here on the rock. to kind of give it that, I don't know, it just looks a lot better. Um, so... It, you can uh, adjust that just by here. You can go as dark as you want or as light as you want. And that works with the distant fields. So as you can see back here in the background, you can make them darker, make them lighter. It's kind of up to you. It's kind of whatever scene that you're trying to build and what uh, what type of lighting scheme that you're trying to go for. Um, so let's uh, kind of move on. So that's kind of it as far as the um, the additional parameters that I, I put for the uh, the material instance. Um, but I did add a landscape whole material. Now I had a few requests um, for this. People kind of either wanted a tutorial or you know wanting it to be kind of added. So when you click on your uh, landscape, you have this landscape where you you know you're going to put your uh, landscape material and then you have this little uh it show advanced so when you click that it'll have landscape whole material generally that's this blank um so here i added the landscape hole so you're going to click and you put that in there and then what that uh, gives you the ability to do is create yourself um, a hole in your landscape for the player to literally fall into or or walk into so if you let's just say we wanted to do a cave entrance here we're going to go up to the landscape. We're going to make sure you're on Sculpt. Click the Sculpt tool. And you're going to come down here. And you're going to see all these different options, but you're going to see one that's called Visibility. We're going to click on that. And now what that gives us the ability to do is when you click and drag, it creates a hole in your landscape. So now an actual player will be able to walk in there. So you would just you know, do some rock. Um, you know, assets around there and create yourself an actual cave system. Um, you can make it as big as you want, or you can make it as small as you want. But to add the what I'm doing here is you're going to hold shift and you're going to, you can cover it back up. Um, again, you can kind of, you can just do this anywhere. You can just create a little small little hole there. And then the player will literally just fall right into it. So it's kind of up to you on what you want to do, but give you the, the simple tool to do it. So let's see. Um, so as far as uh, that's concerned, that's really kind of uh, about it with the uh, the version two. Uh, just really refined it a little bit more for you to be able to, uh, you know, make any type of uh, scenery that you would like. Um, I will be doing some further tutorials. Um, I know I got a bunch of requests for people to, you know, oh, how did you make this landscape? Um, you know, the, your texturing and whatnot. So I use uh, World Machine to be able to use uh, to make this landscape as as well as using World Machine for the uh, the height maps for the textures. Um, so I will be making a, a quick tutorial from start to finish on, you know, creating a, a simple landscape like this within World Machine, making your height maps for your textures uh, to import. Um, to to make a scene like this. I will also be making another quick uh, start to finish tutorial using World Creator 2. Um, if you don't know about it, check it out. It's actually a really powerful tool. It's 
very similar to World Machine. Um, I just like World Creator because of the uh, the way you can texture. Um, you can really, really refine um, nicely in real time what your texturing is going to look like. And then it's very easily uh, importable to uh, UE4. So take a look at it and uh, talk to you soon.